Hi, good evening all of you. In today's video, I am going to talk about one of my most favorite novelist and one of my earliest reads uh, that is Harman Hess Siddhartha. You know, there are two kind of where we are going to talk about uh, this novel Siddhartha in particular and about the writing of Harman Hess in general. So, there are certain existential writers who want to, you know, find the meaning of life. In their writing, you will find that there is a character who is uh, wanting to understand the meaning of life or he is chasing or she is chasing the meaning of life. There is a second kind of writer uh, who leaves you open ended, who are not concerned with the meaning of life. They will engage God, destiny, fate, death, meaninglessness, alienation and then they will leave you open ended uh, to, to analyze in a fate bound universe. So, the second category of writer, the only one name that comes to my mind is Dostoevsky. But the first category of writers are many, there, there, there is Saul Bellow, there is Sartre, there is Camo, there is uh, Milan Kundera. But Herman Hess belonged to a third category of writer, call him existentialist, call him uh, ambivalent modernist, call him uh, the last hour to Goethe. Okay, it does not matter. What matters most to me about Herman Hess writing is that Herman Hess always try to find not the meaning of life through his character, but about the enlightenment. The enlightenment that we understand not in Kantian sense of the term, but in uh, the, the, the Buddhist sense of the term. And no wonder he was very much influenced by Eastern mysticism and Buddhism. So, and before we start uh, Herman Hesse, I would also like to you know uh, point towards some of the key words that you must look while reading at this book is the stillness, the serenity, the lyrical intensity of his writing, uh, a world uh, divided between poles and how to bridge the gap between these poles how to delve deeper into not the nuances of, of the meaning of life, but about the nuances of soul. So, if all these things concern you, I think definitely Herman Hess Siddhartha is the book that has to be read. It is one of my earliest read. So, it is a story about a guy called Siddhartha, not the Gautam Buddha, but a guy called Siddhartha who happened during the time when Buddha was already enlightened. It so happened that Siddhartha was born in a Brahmin family and then he, he was involved in all the kind of rituals uh, in, in the day to day Brahminical world there, but he found that there was something that was amiss. Okay. And that amiss was uh, creating a chaos, creating a, was, was, was creating a trigger in the life of Siddhartha and his very close associate or friend Govinda. So, they both started to look for that missing part in the various rituals, in the various uh, uh, you know orthodoxy of Brahminism, in the scriptures of, of Hindu religion, but to no avail. Then they finally, uh, you know, went for, uh, you know, some kind of summoning or tantric practice, but there again, you know, uh, it did them no good. And then finally, uh, somehow they have heard that there is a man called Gautam Buddha who was very enlightened. And then they, then they went to see Gautam Buddha himself. There lies the genius of Herman Hesse that Herman Hesse wrote a dialogue when this small boy called Siddhartha met Gautam Buddha and there was an intense discussion, intense argument, a dispassionate argument between Siddhartha and, Herman and, uh, and, and Gautam Buddha. And at the end Siddhartha questioned Gautam Buddha that you yourself have found your own meaning, your own enlightenment. So, everyone has to find his own meaning, everyone has to find his own uh, nuances of the soul and enlightenment and then he left to, to uh, you know, the, the climax is that he left Gautam Buddha and then he went on his own way while Govinda uh, stayed there with Gautam Buddha in his order of the monks and that is how the story progresses. Then there are many themes that we can talk about. One theme is that one of the beautiful things about uh, Harman Hesse Siddhartha is that uh, there is a common uh, motif that there are three person in this novel who smiled. 
okay and they smiled because only those three people were enlightened at the beginning only Gautam Buddha smiled in the novel because he was an enlightened one then the fairy man there's a fairy man story I'll not tell you the story it is for you to read and find it out then the fairy man okay who, who rose up and down stream in the river where Siddhartha used to sit in his despair and depression he was a little enlightened one he was the awakened one and the fairy man was the second one in the book who smiled and at the end when Siddhartha the boy who got enlightened on his own leaving Buddha apart leaving all the luxury and the, and the worldly pleasures apart at the end it was Siddhartha who smiled so here smile was a motif in Herman Hesse novel Siddhartha uh, and a testimony to the fact that only three people who are enlightened had a certain degree of smile on their face had a certain degree of smile on their countenance is a beautiful novel and is one of such novels that you know you ought to read if you want to experience what stillness is if you want to read a western version of perhaps a more deeper perhaps a more intense and a western version of what we call the writings of Tagore the poems of Tagore so how much Tagore was loved in his own country or is loved still in India Herman Hesse what Tagore is to India Herman Hesse is to Germany and at the end Siddhartha attained enlightenment and when Gautam was uh, sorry Govinda was crossing on his on uh, crossed his path Govinda stumbled upon Siddhartha Govinda didn't recognize Siddhartha that he was an enlightened one Govinda was again in the search of enlightenment but to no avail at the end uh, Siddhartha recognized Govinda and Siddhartha told Govinda that wisdom cannot be communicated only knowledge can be communicated wisdom cannot be communicated and he touched Govinda with his forehead and all the unity of experience all the unity of uh, the wholeness of experience the unity of existence and all the, 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 the incommunicable wisdom was communicated to Govinda and that is how the book ends let me read a few quotes from this book verbatim that will uh, you know give you the nuances of uh, the, the motives and the symbols and the themes which Herman Hesse deals with in this book so here Siddhartha proclaims that I shall no longer be instructed by yoga or Veda or the ascetics or any other doctrine whatsoever I shall learn from myself be a pupil of myself I shall get to know myself the mystery of Siddhartha he looked around as if he were seeing the world for the first time and that is how Siddhartha you know embark upon a journey of self-exploration the, the, the most uh, surprising uh, or the most striking and the most captivating part about this book is that when there was an intense conversation between Siddhartha the boy and Gautam Buddha the enlightened one and Siddhartha leaves Gautam Buddha that was so audacious that was so courageous of, of Siddhartha okay and that from that part begins the the intensity of the journey of Siddhartha then at the end Siddhartha communicates to Govinda his friend is that wisdom cannot be imparted wisdom that a wise man attempts to impart always sounds like foolishness to someone else knowledge can be communicated but not the wisdom one can find it live it do wonders through it but one cannot communicate and teach it and then at the end uh, one of the crux of Siddhartha is this quote which I would like to read and then I'll end this video here that when someone is seeking said Siddhartha it happens quite easily that he only sees the thing that he is seeking that he is unable to find anything unable to absorb anything beyond beyond what he is seeking because he is only thinking of the thing he is seeking because he has a goal because he is obsessed with his goal seeking means to have a goal but finding means to be free to be receptive to have no goals oh you worthy ones are perhaps indeed a seeker for in striving towards your goal you do not see many things that you that are under your nose and this is the crux of this is this is one sharp statement that marks the characterization of Siddhartha 
this book is also to be read by uh, the people who are the youngsters especially who are you know struggling to write better struggling to you know develop a lyrical intensity in their writing who are uh, you know looking for uh, creative writing programs here and there but to no avail so my one stop advice to them is that kindly read Siddhartha, start with Siddhartha rather than reading, uh, you know, many nonsensical things and finding a, a meaning in all those nonsense. Start reading Siddhartha and in the next video I will talk about some other works of Herman Hesse. Thank you.